Hey everybody, it's PlayStation Gamers Day 2009. We're here having a look at SOCOM Fireteam Bravo 3 on the PSP. I've got Michael Kerr, producer on the game, who's here to tell us about it. So Michael, you guys are showing off a bit of the single player portion of the game today. So uh, can you give us a brief rundown of what you're trying to do with the narrative in this game? Yeah, we really wanted to try and focus on the SEALs as kind of characters this time. So instead of having kind of the HQ uh, character from the previous SOCOMs, we're really bringing it down to the level of the SEALs in the field. You have guys got the facial animation, the mo-capping. What, what sort of work have you guys put into the engine on this game? Well, uh, it's a third generation rendering engine for us, so we've used it for a couple of other games. So we're really getting very good now at pushing tons and tons of effects and all kinds of great stuff uh, to really get the look that we want for the game. Definitely with all the mocap and uh, and the facial animation, it's uh, it, it's been a, a tremendous amount of work for us to be able to figure out all those systems and make sure it all runs and make sure it's still immersive for the users because we want to give you the content, but we also don't want to take you out of the gameplay. So the SOCOM series it has always been known as a very tactical shooter series. Would you say that this carries on that same vein, or are you guys trying to make it a little bit more accessible this time around? Well, uh, this is definitely a Fireteam Bravo game, so it's following along with, uh, with the Fireteam Bravo way of doing things. We have a, a control system that we tried to design, so it's very much pick up and play for the average user, but we also wanted to include the depth for the, for the SOCOM hardcores out there. So there's a lot of scope, and it's very true to the SOCOM franchise, but it's also also accessible to a lot of users. So. Let's talk about the combat for a little bit. What sort of changes have you guys made there? I know uh, the most noticeable change, it looks like, is the regenerative health system. Yeah, we decided to go uh, go with that system because it just felt like it fit the gameplay a little bit better. So it's a little bit more of an immersive experience, I think. Uh, it sort of takes that bit of the arcade element out of it. So you know, you get a good visual indicator when you need to dive for cover. A couple of other upgrades, we've done a lot of work to our targeting reticle system. So it's a target lock system, but that target lock is very much dependent on your movement and the movement of the guy you've got in the lock, the enemy you're trying to shoot, as well as the weapon you're carrying. So it's all, it's all uh, tuned for all the different weapon types. So there's a lot of stuff you can do, but uh, on the screen there, it's a pretty minimal HUD. You're not going to see a lot of clutter on there. Why the, uh, why the decision to do that? It just felt like a more immersive experience, you know? We, we really wanted to give great gameplay, but also tell a really good story with this game, and it just felt like it was a, a better choice to not have the user distracted by stuff. So we've put it all into the background as much as possible. When you dig into it, all the depth is, the depth is there, the, the menus are there for your seal commands, but everything possible we've done with quick commands so that you don't have to interrupt your gameplay experience to go digging through a bunch of menus. All right. So uh, when should we expect to see the game in stores? So uh, Fireteam Bravo 3 is going to be out uh, sometime before Christmas this year. All right, Mike, thanks, thanks a lot.